Greetings everyone, good morning, it's Alexor again. And this is the bloody hell, as you can tell. I bring you a new build. It's not really a new build. It's also not 100% mine, but I changed the one a little bit. This is a fantastic build, mostly done by MaxRollGG. I'm gonna link the original build as well as my version below. Because mine uses a different skill and a, li a little bit of a different playstyle, just a little bit. It's a little bit more melee based. But this thing is truly insane. It sets everything into blood. It's the bloody hell, right? As you can tell, we do our blood gulch and then we go into a bloody profane veil and just ruin everything. Now this is not even an empowered timeline, but it can easily take empowered timelines with this build. Because as you can tell, I'm sitting comfortably at 3,300 health at level 73. So this will get only better the more, the higher we go in levels and ranks. And yeah, it's just crazy how much damage it does. In a huge AoE, especially also to bosses, so it also has very good single, single uh, target DPS. So what is it? And it's also quite a cheap build. I know I'm going to show you the items. I have three legendaries. You don't need these, all right? And one of them you probably have, the Sweating of the Race. But we'll get to this in a second. Let's look at the skills first. And it's not even maxed out here, um, because it's already kicking so hard, I decided to make this build already. Um, because it's just kind of crazy, it's only gonna get better. And I'm gonna, of course, put the links with the levels to 20 and more in there. So the first thing we have is house. That's the one you start with anyway. So this is also a good leveling guide, I think. Like, I leveled this very build from 0 to 76 with pretty much this setup. So you can start with this right from scratch, just fine. So how is this your melee attack, right? This is this. And the key thing you want to have is, one of the key things is, first of all, this, the kill threshold, finality. So everything below 12% dies immediately. This is absolutely awesome against bosses. But also the key thing is, your Chthonic Fissure later will auto-cast every now and then with a chance your Harvest. It's just super awesome. It will also auto-cast your Chaos Bolts, which is great as well. And there could be even another synergy with the Spirit Plague if you have an item. I don't like that item very much. You can run it if you want, not my style, but this would also auto-trigger Spirit Plague. But Harvest is very simple. You want to go with Bleed. The whole idea of this build is damage over time, right? Bleed damage, we also have Frostbite damage, we have a little bit of Ignite and Fire damage, and even Damned, so Necrotic damage over time. So damage over time is what you scale with, okay? Like Curse damage and damage over time. Now this here does physical damage. So when you start playing this build, initially you want to focus more on physical damage, because this is what you what you really cut in and then later you sort of transition into damage over time and then the harvest is not as strong anymore you can also keep focusing on physical damage if you want but your main damage in the end will be your Chthonic fissure and um yeah the spirit plague that's damage over time and a curse both are curses right and the profane veil also has damage over time but the main idea of this is to be a a dodge skill to dodge attacks get up your ward i will show you in a second and um they all also scale with intelligence so the things you want to scale with is intelligence intelligence is always great always scales your damage curse damage and damage over time but when you start from zero you can focus mo first more on what's it called um physical damage so we go with bleed chance of course that means to bleed um yeah, you also get bleed, but they have, they get more stacks and physical penetration with bleed. Bleed on you doesn't really matter because of our item. I'll tell, tell you about this later. And of course, this harvest base and chronic damage is converted to physical. Because our main ethics we're focusing on with this is physical damage. We even turn our Kafanic into physical damage and damage over time. This is how we scale our build. Then... Spirit Shards, that's just a cool addition. 
and uh, increased damage pretty simple here we get necrotic resistance shred and there was also the withering yeah this one uh damage taken from curses yeah this is why we want this if you give withering to the enemies they take more damage from your curses, which is all your damage, really. So this is what the Harvest does very well. So you kind of want to hit them with Harvest while they are standing in your Kefanic Fissure, so they take even more damage. This is very simple. It's just a nice addition. You can also play this build more on a melee build if you want. Even though the Warlock is not really a melee build, but also because Kefanic Fissure casts your Harvest, it's not bad. You can go for more physical damage as your ailment over damage over time if you want. That's up to you. That's more physical version. And bleed is physical damage. So you also help your damage over time with that. It depends a little on what direction you want to go. That's fine. It works both. I decided to go with damage over time because we also have frostbite and the ignite. If you go with physical, it really only buffs your bleed. But then also your melee attack is better. So you can go with more attack speed and more physical damage. There are some great uniques for that, if you want to hit more with a melee version. Then we have Spirit Blake, which goes in the same direction. You have um, Bleed, right? Bleed, additional Bleed Penetration. Bleed, 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 Bleed. Bleed everywhere. It's the Blood Warlock, very simple. And this increases your global damage over time when you afflict an enemy with Spirit Blake. This is great. Slow, cool. Uh, chance to spread Spirit Plague as well. Critically strike and over here. Necronic damage for each point of intelligence. So yeah, that's just all bleed really. And the main idea really is you run at the enemies. You cast your Spirit Plague first. One, two, three times if you want. Then you cast your Chronic Fissure. They're already dead. But then you could also cast your Profane Veil because it also buffs your damage. But this is sort of the idea. How this works. Sometimes... Like, the Funny Fisher has no cooldown, right? So you can cast this all the time, but you can only have one. You gotta keep that in mind. So let's talk about the Kefanic Fisher. Uh, very simple. The, this fi opens this fissure on the ground where spirits shoot out of it. So there is a key thing here we want to look into later. But one thing you definitely want to go for is... This one, the Blood Gulch. Because Kefanic Fisher is initially necrotic damage. This turns it into physical. Now the fire damage is converted to physical, sorry. This is not a blood, physical, so it gains the physical deck, it's tech, it stacks for physical damage, damage over time still, and bleed damage, right? So if you want to go for more bleed, uh, with your idols, for example, that's also just fine. Then over here, we go down this route, curse enemies with acid skin, which causes them to take poison damage over time, and have a chance to be critically struck. Again, damage over time. This is why I like DOT damage more than physical, because DOT buffs all, all of these as well, and not just your physical damage. Uh, yeah, base critical strike, that's fine. Then we have, where is it? This one. The Fisher releases spirits more frequently. These are the, the things that are shooting out the white ones in your, in your Fisher. Like, if we do this, see these white things? And they are sometimes replaced with... The Chaos Bolts, and that is this one. Spirits now have a chance to be replaced by a cast of Chaos Bolts that consumes a portion of its mana cost. And this is why this build is very mana heavy. You gotta have some good mana and mana region to be able to cast your Chaphonic Fissure, because while it's active, it will cast your Chaos Bolts, which will eat a lot of mana. And this one is just same, it just makes it bigger, right? Very simple. You have also fire penetration, oh, and necrotic resistance shred and fire resistance shred. Because we also have ignite, right? This one. Um, and fire damage, yes. So, it's very simple. You just make it bigger and you put physical, like the blood gouge on it, and you put um, poison as well. So you have all the dots on it. Very simple. Now the key thing in this build, what makes this build so different, is really the chaos bolts. That's a lot of shit going on with these. It's mostly can speed, that's all cool. Increased area, yeah, yeah, yeah. Classic stuff. This one is also uh, hits against cursed enemies, you regain health and mana. You want to have this because it gives you mana. So you're up on mana most of the time. Uh, refreshes the duration of curse. This also gives a bone curse on them after it ends. Have a chance to cast rip blood so you get even more, more health from it. This is the conversion from damned and necrotic into physical and bleed. Again, focus on this. 
damned, basically uh, changing it. Um, yeah, directly casting Chaos Boards extends the duration of your active Kephanic Fissure. I actually could respect this because I'm not using this anymore. Um, yeah, you don't really need this. You can do it if you want to play around it, but I, I instead opted for the Transplant to have a Blink, which is not skilled, as you can tell, but I have it in my bar. Because I just want to have the base Blink. I can actually respect this and put it into this Chance of Snow. Because this, what we want to do here, Chaos Bolt's base fire damage is converted to cold. Consequently, this damage scales with cold damage. Or cool, we now have cold damage and frostbite, another dot. But also this is the key thing. It's just this one little note that sometimes it, it just passed by, you don't think much about it. You have to read every single note when you do a build, because it could be insane. Chaos Bolt's hits have a chance to freeze enemies per 1% uncapped cold resistance. See? Uncapped cold resistance. Okay, a lot of freeze, but let's get better. Chaos Bolt's deals, deals Chaos Bolt's deal, I would say, but whatever. More physical damage over time, like bleed, per 4% uncapped cold resistance. Uncapped cold resistance meaning everything that goes above 75%, 4% of this, each one, gains you more damage on your Chaos Bolt's. So this can be... You can put this to 500% and does a lot of damage. That's basically the idea of this build with your items. You want to go with cold resistance as much as possible. In the, like your rings and your helmet or whatever. And then damage over time on your weapons. This is the base idea. Because of this, this little note, which just might just go unnoticed for many. But this thing is insane. Does a lot of damage and increases freeze rate a lot. Freeze rate is of course great because then your uh, enemies can't attack. This little, this little thingy here. Kind of crazy. Now what I did different than the Max Roll one is I, I went with Profane Whale. They usually go with the Dragon... No, I keep saying Dragon Flame, but it's the Ghost Flame. This thing. That channeled ability. The Ghost Flame, right? This is what they go with. I went with the Profane Whale. Because... I mean, they, they skill the, the Ghost Flame towards... Like Mana Region and Resistances and all that, so you can keep channeling it. But... I like the Profane Veil because it gives me an out from boss damage, for example, or any huge hits that are telegraphed by the bosses. Because when I'm in Profane Veil, I can't be attacked directly. I mean, I get attacked, but I dodge a lot of damage. And also, while I do this, because I have this node down here, and I think it's this one. Like, we get more armor. You gain ward per dexterity when you dodge while in Profane Veil. And you get dodge range pretty high, dodge chance. Well, concede you dodge every hit, but you can still take damage over time. Oh yeah, exactly. You dodge every hit, and you gain one for that, uh, gain ward for that. Pretty insane. So you end up with sitting on 5k ward when you gain, come out of your profane veil. Another key thing though is this: you deal more global damage, multiplicative with other modifiers to cursed enemies while in profane veil. This is 30%. So this is why you wanna cast your spirit plague, cast your Kephanic fissure, both curses. And then you go into your Profane Veil to even up the damage and dodge everything while in the same process. I think this is an insanely good synergy. It's very crazy. And this does, does a lot. Does a lot of damage if you just stack all these three uh, attacks after another. And if you then cast after that, you cast your Spirit Plague. You also reduce the cooldown of your Profane Veil again with this one. Um, so you can pretty much cast it most or all the time really. This one's simple, last mana, um, damage. This one's also good. You, you cast a bone cause curse when you enter and exit profane veil, so even more curse damage. We want to have this. And then the necrotic damage is converted to physical, lake of blood. This is why we also have this red, red thingy, because it's now a lake of blood. And as you see, it casts the bone curse when we go into it and after it. So the playstyle is really very simple. I show it really fast. We cast your spirit plague. Cast your Kephanic Fissure, you go into Profane Veil. It ends after a certain time, and then when enemies are still around, you keep hitting them with the Harvest. To even give more curse damage and get more buffs on your things. You don't even have to cast Profane Veil every time, because you do a lot of damage. So it's not necessary all the time. But it does greatly. See? It just does a lot of damage. And it looks also very fancy. I like the effects of it. And you can see it casts the Chaos Bolts a lot. For example, you could... Oh, I already conquered this one. Nice. 
That's good, because I want to show you some items I forgot to pick up. So let's talk about the passives before we go to the items. Passives are also very, very simple. You scale with intelligence, right? So you go for intelligence as much as possible. I tell you, I mean, we also need health, obviously. Um, I mean, the Acolyte tree is really just yeah, increased damage. Damage, that's fine. We just want to go to the 20 so we can get into a mastery. Fine. Warlock. Damage over time. You can even max this out. I'm, I'm like not level 100 yet, so I'm going to max this out later. Damage over time. Health. Simple. Mana region. You need this because you will run out of mana fast with your Chaos Bolts shooting from your Kefanic Fissure. Intelligence. Mana per intelligence. Great. Bleed chance. Even more bleed chance. Nice. Uh, ward DK threshold because you want to run ward. So you need one item which is Exanctionist. Health armor. Great. More health. Good. Ward per second. More tankiness. Intelligence vitality. Awesome. The Wither Jans, I said this before, this is a curse, right? That gives them increased or increases the damage taken by cursed. Awesome. Uh, increased damage over time again. I haven't even maxed this out. Then we want to go for, I think, this one. Yeah. More damage per negative ailment on you because you saw um, with the harvest, this one. When you hit an enemy with harvest, both you and the enemy are inflicted with bleed. So you will be sitting on bleed a lot, a lot of bleed stacks. But it doesn't matter because of the item exemption is. I'm going to show you right here. See at the bottom, immunity to bleed at low health. So you will have the bleed stacks on you, but you won't take damage from it. And it will buff your damage with your passives. Great, great stuff. Um, yeah, cast speed, you can also go for this if you want. It's not really necessary. The spell damage for curses is the one I would probably go for. Some people go for this, more damn chance. And you can even chain them with your damned. You can also go for that. What I really like more is going into the Lich Tree a little bit because we have here Intelligence, Mana Region, actually quite a lot. And you can also go for... Um, where is it? Yes, go into this. Survival of the Cruel and then this one. Health Leech. All sources of Health Leech are converted to increased damage at 10 times the value. So any sort of Health Leech you have also is turned to damage, which is insane. I think they also have, yeah... Ward granted, and there's another one here. Damage. Intelligence. Health region, we don't need this anyway because we create ward. So the Lich has, has much better points here towards the top end for us than the Warlock has. Channeling, this is usually what you would go for if you go for the Ghost Flame, which we don't. Uh, everything else you don't really need. And you can also go for the Anguish, depending on what you want to play with. Um, but yeah, it's very simple. You're going to go for scaling your intelligence, your health, damage over time if you can. And this is also where you go deeply into leech, uh, leech, <laughs> leech, and your ward retention and ward creation. Very simple. Now for the items. As I said, you need Exanctionist. Right now, ward is still very strong, so you need Exanctionist to, especially with, I mean, it makes sense in the Warlock, because this item is really mostly focused on the warlock if you look at it it's this bleeding kind of thing um so this is a, a bleed warlock base item but it's so good we use it in any other build as well even in a holy fire paladin <laughs> but yeah they were gonna nerf it but still you need this item because this gives you the ward this swaddling of the race you probably have i have this like six times it's great because it gives plus five to attributes although these numbers might vary a little bit increase in attack and cast speed that's cool but also, more melee damage to high health enemies, so your harvest hits harder, which is also cast by your Kefanic Fissure. Or spell damage to low health enemies, so this is just very great. And the other points are random, right? Because it has Weaver's Will on it. This is a Weaver's Will item, so they might suck. This is okay. It's not great, it's okay. Um, I think it's just a very good item, also a very cheap item. It needs level 15. Everyone should have this. You should be able to run this just fine. Very cheap with your build. No problem. I have this cool scepter that has increased spell damage and melee damage, which is also great with our harvest. Increased physical damage, but the key thing is the exalt. 160 mana and 50% more mana region. Also, physical penetration, of course, is insane. Chance to ignite. This is just super awesome. You want to go for these things. 
Anything that has damage over time, like chance to ignite. Physical damage scales, although I would like this to have damage over time. But physical damage does more damage overall, so it's fine. And physical penetration, of course, great. This is a very good one. Your offhand, this has a great one. Look at the implicits, that's insane. 13 intelligence, wall per second, wall retention. Then we have 100% increased damage over time. Spell damage. This thing is just awesome. Dodge rating, poison resistance is cool. Would be cool if it had cold resistance on it. Because that scales our damage even better. But you can't have everything, right? You can't have it all. Helmet. Again, damage over time. The ghost flame would be nice if you would be playing the ghost flame build. But I don't do that, so it's fine. I'm going to get a better helmet at some point. Uh, increased health vitality awesome also go always go for health with that because it buffs your your ward cold resistance into implicit freeze rate multiplier damage over time shred armor on hit for someone if you don't know hit also applies to your spell right if you cast a spell this counts as a hit if it was only b for melee attacks it would say shred armor on melee hit okay but it says on hit, so this also applies to your spells. Key thing to note. The rings. Mana, mana region, intelligence, damage over time, elemental resistance, physical resistance. I would love this to be cold resistance, but you know. This one has 6% cold resistance, buffs our damage a lot. Strength, intelligence, fire resist. Awesome. Just very awesome. This one is a exalted experimental sash. Very nice. I only took this because of the health and the wall DK threshold. Because that gives me more ward again. The other one's not that great. I might find a better belt. It's fine. I mentioned these already. Now the last steps of the living. You might not have these. okay? But these really help you build a lot. A lot. This is mostly tankiness. But if you look at it. Armor. Movement speed. 187 ward DK threshold. <coughs> that creates so much ward. It's insane. Current health loss per second. That's fine. But gain as ward per second. Oh cool. Freeze Shred Multiplier. Movement Speed. You might not have to, especially not in the beginning. Then you just go with boots that have um, physical damage or damage over time. And you can put some boots, right? So you go with health or ward the threshold if you have nothing crazy. But you should eventually focus on getting the Lance of the Living, all right? But if you don't, it, you just go on resistances. You can also go with your cold resistance or physical resistances until you are strong enough to take... Damage. The Cofounding Fissure does demi damage very early in the game, so you're just fine with casting this all the time. Now, this one is insane. You might not have this, because I think it's quite rare. Uh, in which case, we go into other ones as well. And now, I made this into a legendary, so ignore the red ones for, for a second. Mur Murama's Hilt. 118% increased curse damage. Remember, our Cofounding Fissure is a curse, as well as our Spirit Plague. Curse spell cast speed. Mana gained when you use harvest, which is also auto used by your Cofounding Fissure. It doesn't say when you cast it, when you use it. I think this implies it also works when the Cofounding Fissure casts it. I'm not sure, but I think that's what it does. And I also put health and damage over time on it. I see the 83%. But this is insane for me already. Now, what people do, if we go to shields sometimes, like the build uses this one. Life's journey instead of your instead of my offhand. For one reason. The third point. 27% chance to inflict spirit plague on melee hit. Basically, when you hit melee with your harvest, which will also be cast by a cophonic fissure, you have a 1 in 4 chance, roughly, to automatically apply spirit plague onto the enemies. In my testing, it didn't feel very strong, to be honest. I get it, it also gives you more attack speed, health gain on block, and increased physical damage it has as well, block effectiveness. Yes, but honestly, over 100% increased damage over time, and spell damage, and vault retentions, and intelligence, that's just better. If your offhand sucks, and you can't find a good one, and you have this one, go with the Lime's Journey. It's great, great addition. I just have to cast my Spirit Plague on the enemies myself, but honestly, that just doesn't really take much, does it? Yeah, I just found these. Um, this one would be a good good boots, for example, to have. Strength, that gives you health. Does it give health? Uh, no, armor and 4%. Yeah, gives you armor. That's not bad. More armor and cold resistance buffs your damage. These are good boots, for example, to have. 
Critical Strike Avoidance, Health Regen. So you can just go with your regular Health, Health Regen, Crits, Movement Speed, Vitality, if you don't have the Lancers of the Living. Because you can't put damage on them, obviously. Or Intelligence, if you have that. This is a great addition for this. So the items are really very simple. Again, damage over time is your main thing. In the early game, physical damage does a lot, probably even a lot more. So until you get to like level 60 or 70, you can go with physical damage just fine. Then you swap it out for damage over time. Because then you also have these skills in all the other damage over time effects. But until then, physical damage is just fine. And again, it's really only two uniques you need. And the exemption is you definitely need. This one you should have anyway, so I don't count it as a unique. This is a very easy to get item. This one you should get. This one you don't, it's cool, but you don't really need it. And there are other relics, there are lots of relics um, where you can go with damage over time and cold resistance, for example. I think there's also damage over time. Oh, this has chance to bleed on hit, also great. Uh, minion damage. No. Necrotic damage. No, profane veil, damage over time, health. They're, they're good um, relics you will find. Same scaling as always. Now for the idols. The idols are very simple also. We have chance to bleed on hit. Great. Damage over time. Simple. Ward retention, health. 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 Bleed on hit. Bleed on hit. This plague means poison damage over time. And because we have... Um, damage over time effects a lot. This is great, but probably, to be honest, a health idol will probably do more. I'm still playing around with this, so you can figure this out for yourself, but health will probably be better if you just go for health or damage over time. Health, ward retention also. So you go for ward retention, health, damage over time. In the early game, you can go for physical damage as well. As I said, early game, this scares the damage a lot. So, and if you, if you have these chance to bleed on hit, like any percent is pretty insane. 40% increased damage over time. So these Acolyte Idols are very great if you have them. So yeah, that, that's already it about the build. Very simple, nothing crazy. As I said, what you do then is you cast your Spirit Plague on the enemies, you cast your Cophonic Fissure and go into your Profane Veil, which in immediately does more damage to the enemies. It curses them as well. They get more curse damage. You can also start hitting with your Harvest on them. Very, very simple. You have your Transplant really to, to have more movement speed. This is not even a skilled skill, <laughs> but you still do a lot of damage with it also. Super great build. As I said, I'm going to put both links in the description. One to the original max roll, one with the ghost flame, and one with my version with the profane veil, which I like better to dodge enemies. So bring a lot of blood into the world with this build. <laughs> and again, it's also a great beginner build. You can start right from scratch with it and go into higher levels, no problem. So let me know in the comments if you like this one, what you want to change, if you want to change anything, if you have any recommendations for items that we could use as well. And I will see you in the next video.